In this series of videos, we're going to review the definition of a polynomial ring, and we're going to discuss some of the properties that all polynomial rings have in common. To begin, you know, I would suggest going back and looking at the video on adjoint notation. If you are unfamiliar with things like z adjoined x, q adjoined x, and what is meant by that, but just to review, um, we've got the formal definition of the polynomial ring f adjoined alpha, where f is some sort of ring and alpha is just some sort of symbol. Um, alpha can really be anything. Here we're using x as though it's a variable. Uh, and this is the collection of all linear combinations of an element of the ring f and some sort of type of power of the element alpha. Um, polynomial rings like the integers adjoined x, the rationals adjoined x, or the real numbers adjoined x are very familiar to us. These are things that we've been dealing with mostly since high school. Um, however, we really can make f anything we want it to be. And somewhat the point of some of these earlier slides is to show you that everything still works in the familiar way, even if the ring that we choose for f is not as familiar or as comfortable as something like z, q, or r. And I want to remind you and just sort of stress, this is just a pedagogical point, but this latter definition, this adjoint notation, is a better way of thinking about polynomial rings for our purposes. That is, in high school, when you're in a normal and not abstract algebra class, when you're talking about polynomials, you're often thinking about them as functions of the ring that you started with. So you're thinking of something like r adjoined x, polynomials with real coefficients, is some sort of function that just maps the real numbers to the real numbers. Here, we're not going to really think about the polynomials in that way. We're going to abstract. And what we're going to be doing is thinking about the collection of polynomials and how they interact with one another, the rules for interaction, the deeper properties that all polynomials share. Um, we're not going to be particularly interested with taking these polynomials and evaluating them at any particular element of the ring that we're looking at. Um, it's, I want to digress for one second. It's possible that when I have this f adjoined alpha notation, if I'm talking about that polynomial ring, one thing that I may do is refer to the ring f as the ground ring. Um, this is not something that's done in Galleon, and I will try to refrain from using this notation, but if I say the phrase ground ring, that's what I mean. So let's pick a non-standard example and let's just work with that to see how these properties, um, these operations and computations that we're very used to in more familiar rings, how do they work when we change to a ring that's perhaps less familiar to us? So the example I want to take is I want to consider the ring R, which is the integers mod 5 adjoined x. So all this means is we're going to have polynomials where the only options for the coefficients on those polynomials are the numbers 0 through 4, the elements of z mod 5. And every time we do a computation inside of this ring, we want to be making sure that we're working modulo 5. My caution is we only want to work modulo 5 on the coefficients of this ring. On the exponents of this ring, we're allowed to have numbers that are bigger than 5. Um, that's perfectly fine. That modular arithmetic does not pertain to the exponents in these computations. So hopefully this example will make things a little bit more clear. Let's pick f of x to be the polynomial 3x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus x plus 4. And let's let g of x be 2x squared plus x plus 3. Let's work out an example where we compute the product of f of x times g of x. And then let's do something that is not even particularly a happy task to do when we're working in familiar rings like r adjoined x, but let's use the quotient remainder theorem to take the polynomial of larger degree, the polynomial f of x, and let's write it as some polynomial multiple of g of x, and by polynomial multiple I mean a, a polynomial that lives in our ring r, plus a remainder. So the remainder here is going to be some other polynomial, again belonging to the ring r, that has degree strictly less than the degree of g. 
first things first, let's do the multiplication, the somewhat more familiar and comfortable operation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take F and put big parentheses around all of it, and we're going to take G and we're going to put big parentheses around all of it, and we're going to distribute multiplication over addition in the familiar way. I would say the word FOIL, although FOIL tends to refer to polynomials with only two addends being multiplied together, uh, so it's that sort of generalized FOILing process. Take the multiplication and distribute it out over addition. And what I'm going to do, you really always have two options when you're doing this, is I am going to, in this example, first do the multiplication, distributing everything out and grouping like terms. And after I've done that multiplication, I'm going to reduce the coefficients to modulo 5. So first I'm going to do the multiplication, then I will reduce mod 5. What I've done here is I've taken f of x and multiplied it by g of x, distributing the multiplication over the addition. And in the first equality here, I've taken a step that isn't shown on the slide, just for the sake of saving space, and I've combined like terms. And what happens when you distribute that multiplication, and you should check to make sure I haven't made a mistake, is you get the polynomial 6x to the 6th plus 9x to the 5th plus 18x to the 4th plus 14x cubed plus 18x squared plus 7x plus 12. And the next step I'm going to take, this is what happens when I multiply f of x times g of x. However, those numbers, 6, 9, 18, 14, so on and so forth, none of them belongs to the ring z mod 5, and I need all of the coefficients to belong to the ring z mod 5. So what I'm going to do, what I've done to go from the first line to the second line here, is I've reduced all of the coefficients to their analogs modulo 5. So I end up with the polynomial x to the 6th plus 4x to the 5th plus 3x to the 4th, plus 4x cubed, plus 3x squared, plus 2x plus 2. Noticing again here, all that I really want to stress is that although I reduced the coefficients modulo 5, I did not reduce the exponents modulo 5. It's allowed for me to have that x to the 6th and that 4x to the 5th term, and in fact that's what we need to do. Next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use long division to write f of x as q of x, g of x, plus r of x. And in this example, instead of first doing the whole long division using real numbers, and then later converting all of the coefficients in my result to z mod 5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert, I'm going to do all of my computations in z mod 5, and then I'm going to convert everything to z mod 5 as I move along. So here's what I mean by this. When I take, in the first step of my long division, I've got the f of x underneath the division sign, and g of x is sitting there, that 2x squared plus x plus 3. Uh, that's my divisor. And I'm asking myself, what do I need to multiply 2x squared by in order to get 3x to the fourth? If I were doing this computation in something like r adjoined x, I would say, that's simple. I need to take 2, and I need to multiply it by 3 halves. But I don't want to write 3 halves x squared for what I need to multiply the divisor by. What I want to do is I want to convert that 3 halves into z mod 5. So what I'm going to say is what do I need to multiply 2 by in z mod 5 in order to obtain the number 3, and the answer is 4. And then I still need to multiply that x squared by x squared in order to get 3x to the fourth. So in order to make my 2x squared match up and be 3x to the fourth, I need to multiply it by 4x squared. Now what I do is I take that 4x squared and I multiply that by the whole divisor, 2x squared plus x plus 3. And I again, I do all of my computations in z mod 5. So we've already discussed how that leading coefficient will behave. When I take the 4x squared and multiply it by x, I'm still going to get 4x cubed. But when I take that 4x squared and multiply it by the 3, I'm going to end up with 12x squared and I'm going to reduce that modulo 5 to just get 2x squared. And then I put parentheses around what happens when I distribute that 4x squared to each term of the divisor, and I'm going to do a subtraction here. Now the first terms, the 3x to the fourth, will cancel. That's by design. And then I have to do all of my computations again with the remaining two terms, the 3x cubed minus 4x cubed. That's going to give me a negative 1 modulo 5, which I'm going to reduce to be 4x cubed. And when I take the 3x squared and subtract 2x squared, then I don't have to do any reduction here. That's just x squared. 
since one is an element of z mod 5, I'm okay. And now I'm going to repeat this process. So that's the first whole completed step of this long division algorithm. The next thing I'm going to do is say, all right, now I'm working with a leading coefficient of 4x cubed. So what do I need to multiply 2x squared by in order to get 4x cubed? This one is nice because I don't even have to work modularly. The answer is just 2x. Again, I distribute that 2x to each term of the divisor, giving me 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. And I need to subtract that, always working modulo 5. So again, when I compute this x squared minus 2x squared, I end up with a negative 1, which is a 4, modulo 5. And the x that I had from way up top, let's see if I can do this here, this x I had to make sure I brought down here, and the x term minus the x term gives me a 0x right here that I haven't written. Last but not least, I finish off here. I need to multiply that 2x squared plus x plus 3 times 2 in order to get those leading coefficients of the remaining polynomials to match up. Distributing the 2 to each term of the divisor, I end up with 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, and I need to subtract that from the 4x squared plus 4 that remains of the dividend. And I do that subtraction modulo 5, and I end up with 3x plus 3. Now, this is where I know I can stop. I've gotten my full polynomial, 4x squared plus 2x plus 2 in the top, I and mean, I can't go down any further in terms, and the thing that I have remaining at the bottom, this 3x plus 3, this is my remainder because this is a polynomial. It's in z mod 5, uh, adjoined x, and it had the polynomial 3x plus 3 has degree 1, which is strictly less than the degree of my divisor, 2x squared plus x plus 3, which is 2. So when I put that all together, what we've done is we have that f of x is the thing up at the top, 4x squared plus 2x plus 2, multiplied by my g of x, plus the remainder, which is 3x plus 3.